Hello friends, here we are again, y'all already know what time it is, <laughs> what's up y'all, um, it's the first time I've streamed in a while, but yeah, you know, good old streaming times, how's everyone doing, we got Columbia in the chat, this is gonna be one of my, uh, my old school style streams that I haven't done in a while, where pretty much, Y'all just gonna hang out with me while I do some work. Let me know how the music sounding to you if it's too loud. It should be fine though. I found there's always a couple people who complain about the music, but I think it's cause they just don't like music. <laughs> so <laughs> it's less about it being loud and more about them just not liking music. We got Taiwan in the house. Amanda, hey, hey. Good afternoon, I guess, here in the States. Just gonna ask before you get started, do you offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring? I do offer a little bit, but honestly, what I'm trying to do is get a more like a mentoring program so I can actually help people out. That's the, the biggest thing for me. There's a lot of people out here just trying to take people's money. I, I wanna make sure that everything's really good before I start doing mentoring. I want to make sure that it really works well. So I'm a little picky about that. <laughs> so I do offer some. Um, I need to get the links back up on my site. But you know, just shoot me an email. We can get some stuff going. My boy JC in the house. What's up, man? How you doing? Got Arizona, Columbia. Music is great. Lo-fi is great. Yeah. Yeah, we got Team Magenta in the house. Quinn Photography, thanks for joining. Check out that new video I just dropped about um, my thoughts before recording a full wedding day video. It's actually kind of cool just to see me <laughs> stressed out, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, so today, instead of editing y'all's photos, you're gonna be watching me do my own workflow. Now, generally I would run my photos through some kind of like Imagine AI or something for AI culling, but I'm gonna cull it by hand this time. Um, halfway so y'all can see and then also because I have the new GFX 102 photos So if you want to see some of these medium format photos and how they turned out, I'm gonna call it by hand I was already subbed for you. I don't know why I did that <laughs> Okay, <laughs> That's cool though Music is great. Keep your the good work streaming from Portsmouth. Awesome But yeah, let's go ahead and uh Let's jump in here and go ahead and get it going. So, with this, I shot, I have a lot of cameras, so this is probably the most photos I've had in a while. But basically, I had two GFX 102s, I had an XD5 for my wide shots, and then I also, my second had two cameras. She had an XT20 and an XT4. So, you can see here in the metadata, like, we got a bunch of different cameras to sort through. And so what I'm gonna do, generally what I do is I start out by culling my own photos first. So yeah, I'm just gonna do the XT, the, the GFX is in the XT5. And then I'll do my second photographer's photos next. And I think I'm gonna cull it in Lightroom this time. Um, sometimes I use other programs for culling. But Lightroom's been doing okay, except for the most recent update and editing with the recent update. It's been kind of bad, but if y'all are familiar, I use the yes method of culling. So I don't focus on culling out, I'm basically culling in. So because of that, it makes it a little bit easier for me to just choose the photos. I tend to also go pretty fast. So feel free to ask questions while I'm culling. 
take a look at these photos, you're mainly gonna be seeing GFX and then a sprinkling in of some um, XD5 photos. But yeah, basically if the photo hits me, I'm just gonna select and say yeah. Like there's gonna be no questions asked. I'm just gonna go ahead and call it, you know. But yeah, any of these wider shots you see are with the XT5. Flat lay. Uh -oh. Y'all can see too, like, especially with my flat lay shots, I don't like to take a lot of photos. Yo, check this out. Because I didn't have a macro lens, but because I was shooting with the GFX, I just cropped all the way in on the photo. I could probably crop it even more too. That's the thing I love about the GFX. You could just crop in so hard and be like, here it is. I also, I might edit a couple photos too on my way through these. try my best to make the culling process like quick though that's always the the goal this photo's so good I'm gonna have to figure out how to get the people out of the back though it's gonna be kind of rough I'm thinking Photoshop can do it, but. I think this is me. It must be hard when they all look amazing. I'm assuming rating five is yes. Yeah, I like to do the five rating and I should have five stars for all the photos that I wanna keep. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be hard to save. I feel like I can do it though. Let's try it out real quick, let's see what we can do. So we're going to edit in Photoshop, rocking that Photoshop beta. At this point, I think the generative refill is a built-in feature, but I still rock with the beta for whatever reason. <laughs> off we gotta get rid of this and generally I just let it generate the AI usually takes care of it pretty well actually it's ridiculous y'all Like, how is it so good? 
I gotta get rid of this little spot here too, which that shouldn't be a problem at all. Hey, hey, welcome to the stream. There we go. Again, no issues there. Oh, I think this one's a little better. So that was easy. Now let's hit this corner. The biggest thing I found is it's better to try not to do big sections at a time. You kind of have to let it do one thing rather than like everything. Once you try and start it to do everything, it kind of falls apart. So good. <laughs> we'll leave it like that for now. Okay, here's where it's gonna get a little. We got Milwaukee in the house. Let's see if it can. See if you can handle that. Yeah, if y'all aren't using the Photoshop generative AI, like you need to get on it. Because when it comes to actually removing stuff from photos, it like, look, I mean, look at it. Look at it go. I honestly kind of want to go with this one because it's the overall better choice. And then we can now just go back in and clean up some of these other spots real quick. And the thing for me is like, back in the day, this used to be so hard to just remove stuff. It was possible, but there was so much just like, so much clone stamping and all kinds of annoyingness. I hated it so much. This is like, so much easier. Look at that. Wow, okay. <laughs> okay. We're almost there. Pretty good so far. This last one I feel like is gonna be the hardest part. Let's see if Photoshop can do it. It's close. The background's good. It, I don't know what it decided to do to her hair though. We need a Google Doc with two columns, image problem and AI prompt for those common edits. Oh yeah, I mean, I found that it, it does pretty well by itself. Like you don't even need to tell it to do much. Like it's gonna do it for you. Yeah, the biggest problem here is what it did to her hair. Um, but I guess I can, can't I just, I can delete it, right? Y'all think I can just... Just do this to it? Is that gonna work? Uh... 
click the alternates. I don't think I liked the alternates, but I can't remember. Um, where did it go? What happened to my music? Oh, it's still playing. It's just super quiet. <laughs> usually generates multiple images. Yes. And it's usually there, but I don't see it anymore. Oh, you know what it was? I rasterized the layer, I think. There we go. For everyone, it did something to her hair. And I mean, I could always come back and just see if it can handle fixing her hair, but I don't trust it. Especially when it comes to brown folks, I'd be surprised if it can pull it off. How is the GFX 102 in low light? From my understanding, even though the lens are slower, the noise is still reduced at a higher ISO. Um, wow. Is that almost what it originally was? That's pretty good, y'all. How crazy. And again, that's super detailed. Like, maybe someone would notice, but... The fact that I can do this nowadays is, like, just so awesome. Because before, I wasn't able to do that at all. And there were people who could, you know? Like, there were people who were really good at clone stamping and all that, so I can't do it. This is, like, literally the only way it's gonna happen. That last edit was impressive. I'm actually highly impressed that it did that. I don't even know how to feel no more. <laughs> but yeah, as far as the ISO, I feel like it did well. You know what it is? And I haven't seen, I need to look at other camera companies, but something about Fujifilm noise doesn't feel so much like noise. It feels more like grain. Look at that before and after, y'all. Photoshop is in there, yo. But yeah, something something about Fujifilm files, they just look more grainy, like, um, like from a film camera, not noisy. Let me see if I can kind of show y'all. So the photos that probably have the most noise are gonna be these sparkler exit ones. Yeah, so I'm at ISO 1000 at this point. Is this, on, that's not 100%. I gotta go into develop to actually see the And you see, so like, it can be pretty noisy. This is a thousand ISO. You gotta remember too, half of this though is Lightroom itself. Cause Lightroom is like, I don't, Lightroom just doesn't like Fuji files for whatever reason. Um, For me personally, like that's not a problem. Also to that new AID noise is beastie. So the way I'm seeing it is like, clearly it's not maybe the best approach at all times, but it's so good that there's no reason not to use it. Um, 
let's warm up our couple. That's fine, I'll take it. How many photos did I take? I think it's like almost 8,000, but that's between two GFXs, two other Fuji cameras and an X-T5. So it's like a lot of cameras. I can't believe I finally caught a live stream. Yeah. <laughs> That's still very useful. I mean, yeah. So this is at 200%. And again, now that I've boosted up the... But again, it's it's 100 megapixels. Like, you're only seeing this if you're zooming in. From here, it doesn't even look that bad at all. Like, it doesn't look like a 1,000 ISO as I would compare it to, like, other cameras. Within an eight hour day and using one camera, how many photos do you think you should be at at the end of the day? Usually, I think per camera, I generally take about 2,000 photos. And I'm I'm very lenient, or not even lenient, I'm strict with how many photos I take. Um, I know a lot of photographers who just be shooting heavy. 2,000 photos for me in a day is pretty much it per camera. So I come home with about 4,000 photos. Do you ever have clients? that do not read the contracts regarding the tat and gallery expire date? Um, not really. And I usually just remind them. I've never had anyone be like, oh, and if anything, like I just extend it for them. So it's fine. Out of those 8K images, how many were brackets? Like bracketed shots, none. I'm conservative too. Just did a five hour wedding with like 1600. Yeah, that sounds about right. Heavily considered GFX. I mean, it it's capable. It's much more capable than any of the other GFXs. I've been highly impressed. So yeah, generally what I would do at this point is I would just run it through the denoise. Cause the AI denoise is pretty good. So what I like to do when I'm checking it is I'll try to zoom in on a spot, kind of like what I was looking at where there's some skin tone somewhere. Also too, it does make it look like the lines are a little, but honestly, I think what it's doing mainly is like really showing the fact that if you didn't hit the focus like a thousand percent. Um, I think earlier someone asked me what computer I had. I'm I'm running the M1 Max MacBook Pro decked out all the way. Um, I'm probably not going to upgrade for a while because these M chips, the M1, 2, and 3, they're like ridiculous. So good. You're losing dynamic range. When you do the... Um, are you talking about in Lightroom? I'm sure. I want to upgrade to the XC5. How good is it? I like it. I like it a lot. The XC5 is what I use mainly. Do you see much difference between the AI denoise versus manual denoise? I feel like I do, but I can't tell what it is, so I don't really have anything to say. Hey, my dude Will in the house. I just got my Mac Studio delivered. Yeah, I'm so jealous, bro. <laughs> I want a Mac Studio so bad. What I'm thinking what I would do is I would get a Mac Studio like decked all the way out and then get like a MacBook Air or something for when I travel. I make 8K photos on eight weddings. You mean like when you shoot the weddings out of all eight together, you only take 8K? X Studio has better condition for dynamic range. I mean, yeah, I think every program works better with Fuji files than Lightroom. Lightroom be hating. <laughs> but I, I know it like the back of my hand. And for me, it's all about speed. Again, wedding photography. I'm dealing with thousands of photos. I'm not trying to sit here all day and perfect every photo. I just need them to look as good as they can. Let me see if I can change my lighting a little bit. 
get some more light on me. There we go. Do you think you'll ever go to Lightroom New versus Classic? No, Classic, Classic sorts its photos way better. The new one, it's okay, but it's exporting and it's sorting of photos is still the, the main lacking part. Look at that, much better. The orange is a little too much. Oh, is this only the denoise? Oh no, why is the before and after the same? It's because it's a stack. I always hate when it does that. I don't understand why some photogs are obsessed with the best, with best this or that. Does the end result look great? That, exactly, I'm kind of the same way. It's like, do my photos look good? Can I edit them well? Are my couples happy? And that's it, you know, like, zooming in at a thousand percent and being like, oh my God, it's off. Like, I, I can't. And again, there's certain photographers that that stuff matters for, depending on what they're shooting. But again, and I think this is why wedding photography gets hated on so much, is that's not, that's not our core, that's not what matters to what we're doing, you know? We just need the photos to look good and for our couples to be happy. And you can do that with literally any camera. Let me go back to my culling. So yeah, what stalled me in my culling was removing the people out of this photo here, which Photoshop did a great job. This is an X-T5 shot. Cause again, I didn't have a super wide lens for my GFX. So any shot that's like wide, wide is my X-T5. But yeah, like, the AID noise is gonna have to help these photos too. Man, I shot this with the 16, I wish it was wider. had to move his dad around so we weren't getting so much shadow. I'm still gonna use these though. I'm thinking too. I might take most of my time. What what was I doing? Oh my goodness. I think I'm gonna crop the XT5 photos to match the GFX. I got the GFX 102 TX for your tips while I'm getting it. Nice. Sounds like a rant posted by Mark Marcus Picks channel this week. Same thing, art versus geek. And I mean, yeah. And there's there's a there's nothing wrong with being extra about photography and the details. Honestly, it's those people that keep all the camera companies honest. You know what I mean? So they're not making trash cameras. But at the end of the day. If it takes good photos and it's usable, I'm not gonna be over here like, like my whole life is coming to an end. 
because you know the dynamic range is not as perfect compared to another camera you know Bo about max ISO XC5 can handle when shooting low light. So with most of the Fuji cameras, I don't like to go too far past um like 1600 to 2000. I don't like going higher above that. I it probably could do it fine. I just don't I don't like doing it. You can see here it's pretty dark in this room. I am using flash, but um I tend to just like to shoot it like ISO 800, let the flash fill it up some. But yeah, this day was pretty dark. Basically what happened was it was like raining all night. And it, it was raining that day as well. So I was already kind of bummed out because am I still, is my metadata still going? I'm trying to call my stuff first. I'll do the seconds later. Um, but yeah, I was bummed out because I was going to be doing a full wedding day. And like, it was just raining everywhere. It was the absolute worst. But hold on real quick. I just got the most important delivery of the day. The most important delivery of the day. My wife done made me, look at this y'all. Homemade pizza rolls. What you know about that? <laughs> look, look at how crispy these boys look. Can I show it in the camera? Will it, will it block my face? Look at that. Ooh. I'm about to, mmm. And they got the pepperoni. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> so good. I got some. That room is dope for the for the groom. Yeah. There was like a bunch of space in there that wasn't really working, but that one specific room was awesome love your photos thank you so much <laughs> since i'm to chicago <laughs> yeah these, these things are good so my wife is half chinese and when we were thinking about making pizza rolls because she doesn't like me eating those janko store pizza rolls She was like, oh, they're pretty much like wontons. So she pretty much just wrapping them like wontons. I'm sorry about all this flashing. I wish it wasn't flashing like that so much. So yeah, this is X-T5. There we go, actually, let's get rid of this one. How you buy the preset? It's on uh, my website. You should be able to see it there. Oh, where's my chat box? I thought, oh, I thought I turned them on. Yeah, you should, you should see the presets there. Using the XT30 with the Sigma 1835, it's my daily. I have very little to complain about. Yeah, I love the XT30. I really only upgrade it because of my like day-to-day -day needs.
like the fact that I do so much video work, being a YouTuber, switching up to the XS20 made more sense. But I was super sad when I was selling my uh, XT30. I love that camera so much. Why is it flashing? Was it flashing like that before? I feel like I don't remember it flashing like that. I'm not sure if you'll be able to buy it if you're in Indonesia. I think it depends on, you know, how you're using your payment processing and stuff. I would assume so. I mean, you can use PayPal as well, so. It's definitely possible. See, I'm like I'm trying my best not to over coal. Really, why did it start flashing like this? I like that last one better. Mm. What y'all know about homemade pizza rolls? We got Indy in the house. Welcome to the stream. So yeah, most of these are GFX photos. They wanted to do a first look with um, bridesmaids, but they didn't really come over the right way, so it didn't really work. And then mom was in her fields. Oh, that's a good one. Was this GFX? No, that's an XT5. See, and you know what I like too? So since the XT5 is like 40 something megapixels, it still keeps up with the GFX to a degree with the resolution. So when you're shooting it wide like that, you honestly can't tell sometimes. Too much magenta for once. <laughs> That orange is also, it's orange and a little too hard as well. I think this would look better in black and white. I wanted to do a color one as well, but I'm gonna, well, first off, let's match the crop. So see, this would be more of a GFX crop. And then now I'm gonna make a virtual copy. Go ahead and make a black and white version, yeah. Look at that hitting, yo. Black and white is hitting. Sounded extra crunchy. I know. These things is popping, yo. Well, yeah, I think I didn't finish, but... So since my wife is Chinese, she's just using wonton wrappers. Wrapping them like wontons. She was like, oh, this makes sense. This was first look. At this point in the day, we were running a little bit behind. Y'all think I can get rid of her in the back there? The black, yeah, the black and white is so good on that photo. 
need some help deciding if relocating to Charlotte NC is worth it. Oh, nice. You'd be closer to me. Um, I mean, it depends on what you're looking for. I can't really answer for your life. But if you're concerned about photography, keep in mind that North Carolina, especially Charlotte, Raleigh, Durham, Cary, is where most people are moving right now. With like the price of everything just being super expensive, North Carolina has been popping. It's been popping for years. Um, usually, you know, everyone right now is hoping that there's like a housing crash or something. Usually, like at least the Raleigh area, I can't speak so much for Charlotte, but it tends to not crash. It it's a pretty decent area where there's there's people here. There's work, you know. Appreciate you showing Uncold Raw album to the world. I don't think I would have that confidence. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because y'all can see it. There's missed shots in here. I I think what I at least like to do now that I'm in the position that I'm in, which feels weird to say, but you know, like with other photographers, especially starting out, it's almost like my duty to just be like, look, we all miss shots. Stuff happens. It doesn't work well. We take crappy photos. All of us do, you know? Usually you're seeing our best work, but everybody takes bad photos. Also, what Fuji batteries do you recommend? I, I like to use the stock ones. I'm one of those people. I don't like using third party. This also looks like he's gonna hit in black and white too. I got these, uh, I made some AI presets that I'm gonna add to the natural fields preset soon. So I got this subject save and it just selects the subject for me automatically. So now she's a little too bright, but I've brightened her up. And now I can kind of edit it. Also, mind you, when you use presets now in Lightroom, you have this slider here. So I can, you know, choose the slider there. Watson's batteries. You buy the stock ones on the Fuji site? I think so. I mean, you can get them from any like B&H, anything. Vignettes, I, you know, I've never really added any. I've never really found the need. This is gonna need some AI denoise too. A lot of times I don't even check. I'm just like 60%, great, do it. Oh my God, I miss Visco too. That was like when I started. And we're talking Visco when it was just presets, not the whole iPhone stupidness, like original Visco. Their presets were popping. That's what I used to use when I started. Boom, AI denoise. That shadow is looking a little weird. I would for sure mark all the ones that need denoise and make the computer do all of them at, while I eat dinner. That's why I usually, once I call it all, and probably after I edit it all, I'll just run all of them through the denoise. Um, this M1 Max can, it does pretty well too. Like it can take a long time depending on your computer, but these new M1, they can really do it. Funny you said that. I thought y'all veteran photographers didn't make the same mistakes as us working. Nope, it happens. All kinds of dumbness. I had an engagement session where I had my, my, my camera was set because it's mirrorless, you know, you see what you get. But I had the screen set for when I'm shooting at night where it just lights up everything so you can at least see through the viewfinder. And I forgot I had it set like that. So I start shooting the engagement session blown out like at least 10, 15 of the first shots I took. I wonder if it's in this. I think that was last year, so it's probably not in. Yeah, it's not in here. But I straight up blew out all the photos. <laughs> like the like literally the first 15 before I noticed I was blowing them out. 
I thought you would have preferred the XT, XH2S instead of the GFX. So it's it's definitely, the reasons I like Fujifilm are definitely the reasons I stick with them with the smaller cameras and stuff. With the GFX, it's just more about the fact that it's like such a beastie camera and it looks absolutely amazing. That's really dope because yeah, them, them things is heavy. The lenses are huge. Like I can't just swap my lenses whenever I feel like it because the lenses are so big. So yeah, there's a lot of disadvantages, but the image quality is where it really shines through. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get rid of her. Um, generally I shoot an sRGB. I don't like to mess with Adobe RGB. I just sRGB all the way. Does anyone have any issues with the camera overheating while taking photos only? I haven't personally, but I, I feel like I've heard a couple people say something about it. Wow, Photoshop, okay. Wow. I just made a comment about that, but yeah. <laughs> Like I've, I've never had any overheating, but again, I've only shot with the GFX 102 like two times or three times now. I seconded it and then I um, did an engagement session and I also shot this wedding. Let's see, it's a moment of truth. Nah, uh, this one was harder, so I don't blame it. That one's promising. Hmm. I wonder if I can get it to bring this part back. Yeah, and her foot's right here too. XH2 or XT5 for photography, which one would you prefer? The XT2 or the XT5? Um, I don't like that flip screen. I like the tilting screen. That's honestly the biggest part for me. Y'all, this AI generation is just, it's absolutely ridiculous. Like, it really is crazy. That's right, can't you make it generated again? LS Photography, welcome to the stream. We just over here culling and messing around with Photoshop generative AI. <laughs> Starting out in wedding photography, but I'm really struggling to market myself. I'm in the UK, marketing tips. A lot of it is just showing your work as often as possible. It's, it's definitely the hardest thing. I wish there was an easy answer, but there really isn't. Let's see if we can just AI. This section here like this. Mm. 
No. Okay. That's fine. I'm going to leave it how it was. That's as good as it's going to get. And I'm not going to sit over here fussing with it. I don't know what this is, but it's bothering me. Some say that the XT5 is built cheaper in comparison to previous XTs. Is it really that bad? It's not that bad, but I'll be honest. I, I feel like I personally feel it or see it. Because I used to rock with the XT3s. It ain't do nothing. And the XT3, I don't know. That camera was beastie. LS, thank you so much for that super chat. Thank you for the uh, the free coffee. I'm about to get one of them caramel brulee. <laughs> Bro, what is it doing? This thing's hating. Gotta go back to the old fashioned clone stamp. Old trusty gonna do it again. Hey, what are you doing? Boom. Hey, what did it do? Bro. Oh, cause it's sampling from something else. So lost. Can I sample from this? Does that work? No, because there's nothing there. Am I losing my mind? Why is it doing that? Oh well. It's gonna stay there for now. <laughs> Are you going to using the new Honeybook feature for pick time when you're done editing? Oh yeah. I already got it set up. Um, I made a video on it right now. It's it's very bare bones. It doesn't really do a lot, but I feel like the future is going to be awesome. I wonder, let's see if Lightroom will let us do it. Come through Lightroom, help us out. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Lightroom. Finally. There. There's our before, yeah. Yo, the Photoshop AI is ridiculous. I'm gonna be removing so much from photos. <laughs> like if I intended, cause I intended to take the photo of her walking down the stairs, but I didn't know anyone would be behind her. So it just like, it works. Okay, let's get back to color. Uh oh, my metadata is messed up again. Here. A few days since you roasted me and John. <laughs> I mean, I need to get back on streaming. I've been slacking on the stream and that's the real thing. I used to stream once a month, you know? So this, this is a great example of the Fujifilm um, focusing. I think I would assume this is the 55. Yeah. And so first off, both of these lenses don't have a very short focal, like it can't focus very closely. So you can see it here struggling to get the focus. I think I'm in continuous autofocus, probably face autofocus. I was, I found it on the GFX, I use face autofocus more because the depth of field is so shallow that like you're gonna miss the shot you know so obviously i'm stopping down i'm wondering let's see am i stopped down no nope, i shot it wide open so that's half the problem here i'm shooting at like f 1.7 that's what it's saying right yeah so between that And the fact that like she's walking towards me and I'm walking back, like it's, you know, it's struggling. A lot of these aren't, and when with a camera with 102 megapixels, you know, like when you miss the focus, you're gonna see it. So like that one was on, but all these are off. That one's more on, but it's also off. Yeah, it hit this one and it missed the color, it got that one. And I mean, for medium format, it's, it's doing well. And that's the thing, like, a lot of people, they expect everything to be 1,000% perfect, but like, 
us wedding photographers who've been in the game for a hot minute, it's like, don't forget. Don't forget the cameras we used to have, you know? And we made them work. So to me, like, okay, yeah, it missed, you know, the majority of these shots. But really, I only need one or two to get the point across. So there's no point in being like, oh, no. As long as it's hitting the crucial shots, that's all that really matters. If it can't keep up with crucial shots, that's the problem. <laughs> but see that? This is all on. This is pretty good. And I think this was the 110. Oh no, that's the 80. And everyone always complains about the 80. So this was all the 80 continuous autofocus. And these are all pretty much on. You know, the movement, it's really not that much movement. John, have you or can you make a video of your HoneyBook Pick Times Squarespace workflow. Oh, you're thinking about like all of it set up together. That would be a cool video actually. Maybe I'll do that. With medium format, you need to stop down? Yeah. It's kind of the same. Is shooting full frame. Look, that's the only shot it missed. The rest of these are on. So yeah, like it missed a couple of these, but it, it got it back again. John, I got the 5517 and it has a noise focusing manually. Manually? Let's test it. Now you got me curious. I haven't used it manually. I've been only using it autofocus. I got 55. Oh, you just on that twice, okay. Okay, so GFX 102, 55F17. I guess I need to put a SD card in here or something. What all my... Okay, so let me mute the music for two seconds. So generally when it's trying to autofocus, hold on, it wants to save to two cards. Usually when it's trying to autofocus, you get, if y'all can hear that. Can y'all hear it? Actually, y'all can see it too. Could you see it? So that was auto. Um, so let's switch to manual, which yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yep, sounds like it does make a sound. I wasn't very familiar with that, but now I know. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> oh, 
All right. Let's get back to our culling. So this shot is a shot I normally take. It's actually supposed to be more like this. And the fact that I can just crop in like that and do that is always awesome. <laughs> Did I stop down ever? 3.2 is still not enough to get both of them in focus. Oh, I done missed it. Quinn Photography, thank you so much for the super chat. Please enjoy some coffee and a pastry. Thank you. I'm telling you, y'all, I'm about to go get that uh, caramel brulee. This is that time of year. Like, I'm not about that pumpkin spice, but when they get to the Christmas time stuff, I'll be about it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Imagine a live stream with the GFX. <laughs> I could just set it up here. <laughs> Just all this bokeh behind me, like, ah! <laughs> Got here late. Where was this wedding? This was uh, in Atlanta. This is my GFX wedding. The wide shots, however, are with the X-T5. You can really tell the difference too. Like look at the compression and bokeh difference there. We had a sax player, which I was a fan of, because again, I play sax as well, so. There was a crazy apartment fire in ATL recently. Oh, oh, oh yeah, I saw it on the news actually when I was in the hotel. It was like, they were talking about, there was an off-duty cop or something who helped a bunch of people. It was like on the top floor or something. Is that what happened? People setting off fireworks? Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. What's the worst, yo? Yeah, everyone's concern is like, oh, can the GFX keep up? Look at it, y'all. It's hitting it. It's hitting the majority of these shots. And now these folks weren't walking in here slow either. And again, if you want to sit there and nitpick and be like, oh, my Sony can hit every sh that's fine. You know, some cameras are definitely better at the autofocus. I'm not going to sit here and lie. But on the same end, the fact that I got a medium format camera that can even do this is kind of the point. And again, like when I shot the 100S, I was kind of scared, you know, of weddings. This thing is in there and like yeah like these dudes they were they were trucking it in here yo 
this is the 80 which is notoriously slow but like boom there it is that's all i needed just this one shot that's it like i didn't need every shot to be on i don't need 50 photos all in focus at all times Just the fact that it's able to keep up with weddings is like impressed. Like no one stops to think of this. Oh, the autofocus and all this, bro. It's a medium format camera. You got 102 megapixel files, and you're shooting it at eight frames a second. You know, like the fact that it's even nailing any of these shots is impressive. Honestly, seems on par with the 5612 XT3 back in the day. That's what I was saying. And also, welcome to Reggie in the chat. Y'all show Reggie some love. Man, you missed my uh, my wife's homemade pizza rolls that she uses wonton wrappers to make homemade. They're so good. <laughs> Why is that dude rocking two phones? Where? I didn't even notice that. <laughs> also, GFX, I can zoom all the way up in there and be like, bro, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Here, hold on. Let me see if there's any more of them pizza rolls. I'm going to be right back. <laughs> Pizza rolls, homemade pizza rolls. <laughs> GFX is funny because you really can just like zoom all the way in and be like, bro, what are you doing? He's about that life too. I got these two phones. I love these lives though. It's nice to watch videos in real time. <laughs> Yeah, this thing is hitting, yo. Look at that. And this this is probably the best example of its autofocus, like really working. Like you can see it, like, and that's why I, I think I said like eight out of ten shots. So the ladies they slowed down some. Oh, it caught it though. It got it. <laughs> it was like, yeah, let me, let me. Ah. Oh, also too, so I shoot my GFXs with, um, I put them in boost mode for autofocus. Again, I wanna put all of its power behind the autofocus. Benjamin, thank you for that super chat. Is that a super chat? What is that? Whatever it is, it's cool. Let's celebrate their first super on a live stream. Yeah! <laughs> thank you so much, I really appreciate that. Your rolls are so good though. Yeah, and that's the thing, it's like, okay, yeah. It may, like, every camera has its quirks, you know? You just have to get used to it. Again, it's medium format. Look at this file. It's crazy. Look at that detail. Like, Like, the autofocus and everything is not so bad that I'm like, oh no, I can't shoot with the camera. So to me, that that kind of goes further than anything, you know? The thing works. I mean, I should have used my flash a little bit more. It's one of those annoying overcast days where like, the light comes straight down. 
I never tried it. So I've never tried a Sony either, actually. Cause um, I was on Canon, and then from Canon I switched to Fujifilm, and I've been Fujifilm ever since. And like. The Sony files look good. I've seen them, especially from when I do those live streams where y'all give me your photos to edit. And they look fine. Again, nowadays every camera system is taking dope photos, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're gonna look good. The quality's gonna be great. Oh yeah, the ring bear came right up behind the bridesmaid. So see, and this is another thing when it comes to wedding photography. So this is a little off, but this is gonna be a great photo because this is his dad. And even though he's out of focus, it's just a fun shot, you know, like everyone's gonna love that. No one's not gonna love that. And that's what sometimes photographers have to remember is it's not just about you and taking your perfect photo all the time. It's about the day and capturing what's happening, which is again, another reason why people hate on wedding photographers because they're like oh the shot's not sharp and look there's motion blur and blah 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 okay that's great evening from uk john cold wet and miserable as usual <laughs> oh no <laughs> editing wedding myself at the same time awesome thanks for joining in thank you very much for your videos i'm german but live in Tenerife. i'm sorry i can't pronounce anything start wedding photography because you that's awesome I moved from Canon to Sony. I love my a7 IV so much. But I'm also a fan of the Sigma. Ring walked out too early. <laughs> yeah, he was right, y'all saw it, right? He was like right up behind her. And I was like, no, <laughs> I need these shots. That one's good. What was my shutter speed at? 1,250? Is that motion blur? I'm surprised there's so much. About to mess up the whole wedding. That's how it be too. Is an island of Spain. Awesome. That's cool. How many weddings I shoot this year? Five. <laughs> so little. You know, like when you want something, so you like say it. And it happens more than you thought. Because last year I was all like, oh yeah, I'm not going to take as many weddings. Try to focus on, you know, YouTube and stuff, blah, 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 whatever. And then I get like no weddings. <laughs> and then I'm like, uh, did I make a mistake? So yeah, I definitely did only like five weddings. And it felt weird. 100% I shot one wedding this year. <laughs> I'm trying to get back, I, I wanna get back to like between five and 15, but I, I need them to be local. I can't be traveling for uh, weddings no more. I mean, we got, we got another baby on the way in December. So you know, like I'm about to be five kids deep. I'm not trying to have to make every wedding into a weekend, you know? Also too, it's just so much easier to drive 20, 30, 40, an hour, two hours, hit the wedding and come back. Not like, oh, gotta drive all the way over here. Then I gotta, you know, then I gotta, get a hotel, then I gotta do this. It's just a whole ordeal. 
five kids working on a team. I know about to teach them how to do wedding photography. We just roll through, do weddings, photo, video, do the whole thing. <laughs> But you know, it's nailing these shots. Like it's a medium format camera, just straight up nailing these shots. Oh, I think I got a Burnizer coming up. Yeah, this is it here. Let's go ahead and see if we can combine it real quick. Select all the photos. Photo merge, panorama. I'm in my third year of weddings and I did nine this year alongside a full-time job. That's pretty good. That's what I was doing. I, I was full-time at a full-time job for, um, yeah, four to five years before I went full-time photography. So like the first beginning half of my photography career was part-time basically where's your best advice to young photographer at his beginning um so a after you find out what you like to shoot a lot of it would just be you know make sure you're continually working and getting practice in and don't work for free unless it's something you want to do like, don't, don't let people pressure you into shooting for free just because they want it. And they're like, it'll be a great opportunity for you. Unless it's something you really, really want to do and think is worth, don't shoot for free. Um, and yeah, just just get in there and do it. Oh, unable to merge is fine. This is fine. Then. Try to find what works for you best. And don't be afraid to pick a type of photography it may not be your favorite so you can make money like clearly wedding photography is one of the easiest ways to make money and I didn't I didn't do wedding photography just because I wanted to make money I like people I've always liked weddings but um it helps having a style of photography where you can actually make an income then you can do other stuff you want to as well I still get exhausted and stiff for two days after a wedding. Does it get any easier? No, it doesn't. Honestly, if anything, it gets worse. <laughs> I started um, I started taking that liquid IV stuff because someone mentioned it to me and it actually, um, surprisingly, it does well. I Every time I feel like I used to come back from weddings, I'd be you know, destroyed and sick and stuff. And then I started doing liquid IV and like, I come back from a wedding and feel pretty decent. But yeah, stretching and stuff, like, I, and I need to do a lot more of that myself. I take baths. I think I have a video on it, actually. Any plans on website reviews in the near future? Uh, maybe. I definitely should do some more. I just redid my website. Um, I actually kind of like it for once. A lot of times, I don't be liking my own stuff. That's I'm notorious for just not liking my own stuff, so. It's kind of cool that you know I did my website and I was like this is pretty good I think I just got an inquiry it's always hard to tell I get hit up by a lot of people and it's it's never like real it's always like hey bro do you want to buy something I'm like y'all I'm trying to do weddings Oh yeah, that's fine though. I need to fix my... Thanks Greg, I train a few nights a week, but I'm 6'4". Height, so the problem I'm having is mid-back. Oh yeah, I got that nice short body. <laughs> For me, it's usually just like my feet, my shoulders. That new logo though, thank you. Yeah, I'll pop it in here for everybody. But yeah, it's fully updated. It's still on Squarespace. Um, but it looks good. I mean, I could pull it up. I could pull it up here too real quick. Let's 
See, I already, I already had to put the new wedding on here because these photos was popping, yo. <laughs> Do you use two GFX cameras while shooting weddings? So I did for this specific wedding that this photo came from, but normally I don't. Um, I don't own two GFXs, I only own one. Th them boys is expensive. <laughs> I, I don't have that kind of money. But um, so what I think my setup going forward might be is gonna be the X-T5 for my wide shots and I'll use the 16 and the 23 and then my GFX for all my tighter shots and I'll shoot it in 35 mil mode and use the 55 and the 80. And I think that might be my setup going forward. The only problem is like, since I wear the hold fast and I got the straps hanging on me, it's like lopsided on the weight and I feel like that's gonna end up destroying my back, but we'll see. But yeah, there's still a couple of things I need to finish up on the website. Like I wanna have an actual education page that has like blog posts and different things that go along with my YouTube posts. Um, so right now this just leads to my courses, but I wanna make it like a whole page. Um, and also maybe even have like a community around it or something. And I actually, I really like how I did my portfolio page. And so just like a candid honesty, so y'all can kind of see what, you know, everyone's dealing with. So I have a hard time booking in North Carolina for whatever reason. I don't rank very well on Google for North Carolina. So my main goal right now is to rank in North Carolina. So if you notice, all the weddings that show up first, these are all North Carolina venues. So I'm really trying to like get back in North Carolina and mainly get booked there. And I did the same thing for my engagement sessions. These are all North Carolina locations. And you know, if you go to see more weddings, you'll see some of my other stuff in there. But I really, I don't, you know, I don't want to fly for every single wedding. So that's the goal. These people here, these are the owners of the Woobles, if you're familiar. Um, I have a BTS of their wedding, but I lost it and I barely recovered it. Dude, what is, is their website just the Woobles? So yeah, it's really cool to me that I got to shoot their wedding. Um, their business blew up pretty recently and they also, they were on Shark Tank a while ago. So they're popping off. It's actually really cool that I was able to be a part of that for them. So where'd that Brenizer go? There it is. Then we think alike on running a 100S and an X. Yeah, exactly. It makes more sense because a lot of times wider shots aren't gonna have as much depth of field anyway. So using like an X-H2 or a X-T5 or something like that makes a lot of sense. It's gonna be your quick snappy camera. You know, you're gonna be able to pop it up. Usually I've found at least personally, most of the time when you want quick shots that have to happen like this, it's usually a wide lens. It's very rare that you are taking like an 85 mil trying to pop off a quick shot. Like that's not, that's not happening, at least the way I shoot. What is the average length of your weddings? Uh, I generally book for about eight hours. So like eight to nine, it's rare that I do anything longer. Um, I've booked some 12 hours before, but I'm not a fan. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and keep it down to, um, not that many. I wonder, it's kind of bowed. You can't change that in Lightroom, can you? Oh, there is a distortion here, let's see. Oh, it doesn't know what it is anymore. Is there not one for the 110? Fujifilm. Nope, there is not, so that's fine. Oops. Oh, that's only the edges. In Lightroom, or in uh, Photoshop, you can do all kinds of craziness. Mm. 
15k. <laughs> so this is a Brennizer with the GFX 102. So this is like 15 billion megapixels at the moment. Cause it looked like it was at least 15 photos combined. Let's see. <laughs> Look at the dimensions. <laughs> 35,000 pixels. It's 200 megabytes. So generally what I'll try and do is center up the couple. I got the videographer here and the other videographer there. This. Again, we have Photoshop now though, so honestly, like, I can do it like this maybe. Because I definitely can get rid of him. That won't be a problem at all. I like taking these. Should I change it to an actual aspect ratio though, like 16 by 9? That's not even that wide, yo. I guess it works. I don't like it. I liked how it was before when it was super long. We're about to keep it like this. Yeah, 12 hours are definitely, I've done a couple of those. and Especially when you book them like a year in advance. I feel like you get to the 12 hour day and you're like, why did I do this? Also to 12 hours, they're fine. But generally, they're so long that you're just sometimes just standing around not doing anything. Like you're really not using the time like that. It's mainly because the couple wants it. And I try and tell my couples that too, like 10 hours at most. If you want 12, that's fine. But just realize there will come a time where like there'll be little breaks of just me not doing anything because nothing's happening all my wedding days are from 10 a.m to 11 p.m yeah that's crazy yo would you ever switch to sony yeah i don't know maybe i i there's something about fujifilm that i just absolutely love that i just don't see myself switching but again who knows maybe maybe the cameras are awesome but for me, specs aren't the main. That's not really gonna make me like, oh, this is absolutely have to happen because the specs are better. In Sweden, it's more three to six for a normal wedding and a couple 12 hour per season. Oh, that's not bad. Three to six is nice, yo. <laughs> Do a quick edit during the dinner and finish the dinner with a short slideshow, nice. Bridal prep to first dance can be very, can vary so hard in the UK. Hmm. <laughs> he hates Sony. <laughs> oh yeah, speeches. Speeches always take forever. Okay, hold on. To start out, I'm pretty sure in Photoshop there is a... Isn't there like a distortion thing? Yeah, lens correction. Dang, this is huge. It's taking up the whole screen. Can I make this smaller? Look at that resolution. <laughs> This thing is so sharp. Well, yeah, John, you just made like a 3,000 pixel photo. What'd you expect? With a slideshow at the wedding is a great, yeah, I need to start doing that myself. I just never do it. Did y'all see this photo? This thing is crispy, yo. I don't even think I stopped down. This is the 81, or is it the 110? I think it's the 81.7. This thing is crispy. I have two wedding galleries due next week. Oh. Now it's too small, yo. Maybe six? Even 6% is too big. Okay, so lens correction. I just want to do custom. Let's see if I can straighten out that line a little bit. Yeah. Mm. 
much better. If y'all have never used this, like really. Maybe I can do a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's it. That line looks straight. Oh, is it on a hill? Stuff like that irks me. Look how much lower this side is. Well, I guess there's also less people. I wonder if I can Photoshop in fake people. Okay. So that fixes the distortion. So this will make it nice and straight. Can we see the live again? Yeah, it should be up. I usually leave my lives up. Your computer having trouble to stream while you move that photo. <laughs> it's because it's 300 billion pixels. Okay, so now that this is straight, we can deal with your boy back here. Which the nice thing is everyone likes to complain like he's not in the shot. It's because I, you know, look at that, yo. Look at that. Look, I can keep going. Fifteen thousand megapixels. <laughs> but yeah, the only reason he's in the shot is because I made a brainizer. So we can just. Why is that made of honor? Because <laughs> yeah, I don't. Know. Maybe she was looking at me. She hated me the whole day, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Weddings I photograph slash second shoot. Brides wake up at 5 a.m. to get their hair and makeup done so they start even earlier. Really? I be telling the brides, I don't need to be there. Y'all don't need me there at 5 in the morning. Um, Y'all think Photoshop can do it? Should I use a prompt? People sitting? <laughs> but yeah, like, if you, if the bride's waking up at five to get ready, I don't wanna start taking pictures till her makeup's almost done, so I won't be there till like nine or 10. And that's the thing, like, you gotta educate your couples, cause a lot of them will think like, oh yeah, since I wake up at five, I need you to be, no you don't. You don't want me there sitting around the whole time while you're getting your makeup done. Like, there's no reason for me to be there. It's photos. They're like literally a millisecond of time. It didn't even do anything. Oh, it, it tried. This guy looks scary. Who is this? Ew, get it away. Make the bridesmaid smile. I'm not going to do that. I've actually, I've never tried. I've seen people do it. It's not gonna work. It's gonna have her face looking all messed up. Should I just do her mouth? If this fills it in, I'm going to throw a chair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I knew it wasn't, that's too much. If it would have done that, yeah, I also would have been like, yo. Sean's up in the, yeah. Y'all give a shout out to Sean Harrison. That's the groom. Give him some congrats. Why did it do that to her mouth? Oh, yo, eh. <laughs> No, Photoshop don't do it. Can we do the whole face? I'm about to stop though. We're not gonna sit over here and mess her face up like that. Sean about to go tell her. <laughs> Happy, happy face. So I'm gonna be like, yo, the photographer over here messing your face up. <laughs> Just replace her face with your own face smile. <laughs> Leave the first one and teeth were perfect. Oh, yo. Select the Y'all over here bugging. Select the face and play. Oh, no. Why did you do that? 
Why did it do that? Why you do that? Oh no! We're gonna no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, actually, I wonder how noticeable it is. Can you see it from the... Because, see, this is what the photo is going to look like, you know? Let's zoom into it. Yeah! Why did it do that? Why did it add the tongue? What is, what is wrong? AI is bugging, yo. <sighs> Why did it do that? Why was this even a suggestion? <laughs> I'm over here sweating. <laughs> the couple of those I don't need to be there that early. They go that early because we have quite a few traditions. And oh, okay, see, and that's fine. If you have stuff that's actually happening, that's that's very different. I've seen couples who just want you there because, and then you're just kind of like, I don't, I'm not gonna do anything. It's not gonna help anybody. Wait a minute. Is this messed up? Generative full can be the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> hey John, thank you for taking our photos. The brides did wake up early to start here. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly how it is. And there's like, there's really, there's no reason for me to, I would have been standing around like, hello ladies, I guess. Here I am. Well, now I have that on the live stream forever. We can see how Photoshop's over here bugging. <laughs> how is that a smile? Where did it get the tongue? Like, why? Why did it do that? Look how long it's taking to save this file, yo. 300,000 megapixel photo. It's almost there. It's almost got it. I gotta make that into a short. I gotta go find that moment. Oh, Sean, y'all saw you got the first first picture on my website. Y'all couldn't save the document. The document exceeds the four gig limit. <laughs> Would you like to save it in large file format, PSB? Okay. Oh no. It's like, sorry, bro, this it's too big. Can I just change the image size? <laughs> 30,000 pixels by 12,000 let's see if we can let's get it back down to um, let's just go 10,000 oh no my whole computer is crying <laughs> We're gonna get it down to 200 megabytes, but it was two gigs. It's so crispy, oh my goodness. Look at this, yo. Okay, can I save it now? It won't let me just put it back. I want a TIFF. Will it zip image compression? None. 
I don't know what I'm doing anymore. The file will include layers. Okay. I just normally, it, what it will do is it'll save it back into Lightroom. But now I don't know. Oh, it did it. Yeah, look at that. Got it more straight. That's what we wanted. Yeah, it is on a hill. You can just barely see it. Cool. Okay, now that we've seen the tragedy that is AI, let's go back to, uh, <laughs> let's go back to Cully. <laughs> So normally these shots, I like these shots, did I get two of them? I did. So I like these shots to be hand shots. And again, the, oh, the nice thing about it being 102 megapixels is I really can do this. I can just do that. And it ain't gonna hurt nothing. Boom. Uh oh, I think that might be cropped just a little too hard, maybe? Oh no, it should work. Yeah, because these photos, I normally black and white them. That's kind of my thing for the putting on the rings. Um, let's see what the size looks like. Yeah, it's still 11,000 pixels. It's still huge. Like, the fact that I can just do that... Music's a little loud. Cool. The problem is so many songs aren't, like, the same. Some are louder than others. Sometimes locations are on a linear timeline. Sometimes it's a lot more hectic. Wow, yo, that's rough. That is rough. Same thing here. Really, Lightroom? Come on. Just scoop. John wants you to feel <laughs> I'm gonna show off the megapixels. I got enough of them, right? Here goes our first kiss. And again, so this, I threw it in eight megapixels. So you see, like, I'm getting them shots. Not eight, the uh, the eight frames a second. Wow, who needs a zoom when you can crop like that? I mean, honestly, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I'm just gonna get some GFXs and shoot wide all the time. <laughs> you know, like my longest lens will be like a 50 mil equivalent, and then just crop everything. Ain't gonna hurt nothing.
There goes the jump, the broom. I already called this. I might make a GIF out of it. I don't know if the computer can handle. I don't like, is it too bright something? Rephrase that, John. You don't know if Photoshop will handle it. <laughs> I thought I pulled up the shadows. Why did it only do that one photo? It should have done all of them. all GFX everyone's like worried if it can keep up with weddings but it looks great Sean's probably over here like, yeah. <laughs> Currently editing a ton of group shots because one guy kept pulling faces or grabbing people. It's so, I always hate when there's that one person. It's like, can, can't y'all just cooperate real quick? You know? And it's just like, I always love like, I love putting shots together like this. just bring the feeling of everything together. Like you got the closer one and you got the wider one like that. But yeah, there's, there's always one and it's usually a groomsman and he just doesn't care. And you're like, come on, yo. What would you say I have to use on gear on my first wedding? I don't have as many gears yet. <laughs> I mean, so generally, any camera's fine. Again, there's a lot of stuff you'll see online where people are talking about specific gear and you have to have all this. You really don't have to have a lot. But the main thing is gonna be, you definitely need a flash. Get yourself a decent little flash. I would highly recommend getting yourself like, uh, the MagMod MagSphere, because it just makes it so much easier with flash. Um, and then if you're using a single camera, you need a zoom lens, because you're not gonna be able to do that with prime lenses only. And some extra batteries, and that's pretty much it. Technically, you don't need off-camera flash. You should be fine with just like a single flash. Um, but I would highly recommend I would highly, highly recommend getting a, um, just a flash. Like don't show up without a flash. You see, this is, um, this is Photoshop AI again. I got rid of that guy who was standing there. There he goes in the corner there. Look, it even, it even got the fence. It's crazy, like the Photoshop AI is ridiculous. It's like every photographer's dream now because taking stuff out of photos is just kind of like bloop and it's gone. And usually it's pretty good. And again, I don't give it a prompt. I just like generate the thing and it's like great here. I 
I don't know if y'all can tell, that first version has a little bit too much orange popping off. So I sucked it out a little bit. Again, with brown skin, orange is gonna be like the biggest issue. If you have too much of it, it just makes us look all super orangey and stuff. Deliver a sneak peek with all the faces generated. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got me over here doing crazies now. Now I want to try. <laughs> it's like, oh, what a wonderful wedding day. And they get the pictures back. Like, what is this? I'm scared, y'all. I'm scared. Might get another off-camera flash. Yeah. I think generally you can start out without off-camera. I'm usually a big fan of like, just go ahead and like, <laughs> just go ahead and um, get, your, get yourself a flash and learn how to use the on-camera. <laughs> and then deal with off camera later. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sean. I'm just over here messing around. <laughs> Sean's like, is this what I hired? I thought you were a photographer, bro. Oh, no. There you go. That's, that's a good one right there. It actually, as far as like the skin tone and everything, it actually did pretty good back here. But like... <laughs> I think you can have it generated again too, can't you? Yeah. I have a 25 mil, 85, 70 to 200. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> John's bold enough to do it. <laughs> I got the groom in the live stream too. I'm over here messing his face up live while he watches. <laughs> he said, what you do to me? <laughs> Why you do that? There you go. What a beautiful wedding day. Yo, this AI generation is just, it's over here hating, yo. 24 to 70 is a lifesaver in tight indoors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ew, why did it do that to her? <laughs> the joke of the day is we were going to be semi YouTube famous. <laughs> <laughs> Why did it do that? Oh, oh, it's like a cyclops. That's scary, yo. I'm 19 years old. I cannot afford everything. I worked for all my stuff. That's awesome. But yeah, get yourself a flash and a, ca a camera. Oh, it barely changed your face. Did it change it at all? You saw people doing the thumbs up for the phones. Honestly though, as long as the faces weren't crazy, you could use this for like a styled shoot if you want your um your couple to look different than everyone else's shots. Go dot six eighty five. What do you say? That's probably good enough. It didn't do it. Oh, it got rid of the phone though. What'd y'all say? Angry face. I'm over here wasting my time. I need to go ahead and call this, y'all. Y'all got me over here doing crazy. 
We've all been there. It's nothing. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, the Godox is, should be fine. Switch from a TT-685 to a B1 and it's so much. Yeah, the, the 685s are okay, but the newer ones are better. I'm still rocking the um, V860s and those are fine for me. They were just great. Oh my goodness. Oh no. That's scary, yo. AI is over. I'm, don't save that. Get rid of it. Burn it. There we go, look at this, this is the real, look at these beautiful people. Okay. worried about the GFX autofocus like look it's doing it it's giving us enough of what we need as a wedding photographer I don't know what else there is to ask for it's hitting all these shots you know it's missing a couple again it's like the older cameras really I mean I even said it in my video like I would compare it to like an XT2 or something I just switched from oh yeah I just read that okay So generally, right after everyone gets married, I like to just come and hang around with a longer lens, like an 85 equivalent. And just get reactions, because usually the couple's gonna be hanging out with their friends, right? So the bridal party comes over and they're all like, yeah, yeah. So I like to just kind of hang out in the back you know, while they're taking it in and just kind of get these like close up shots of them reacting to their friends and stuff. Oh, is my metadata still on? Okay. I don't want to call my seconds photos just yet. Oh, cool. His brother was, okay. I thought her brother wasn't in the shots. I was like worried, yo. I was having, I was having issues. We didn't take photos with her brother for some reason. That's the real stress of being a wedding photographer. Like missing a crucial shot and coming back later and being like, oh my God, I missed the crucial shot. And half the time it's not your fault. It's like, you know, just the day itself, how the day was going. I think at some point, yeah, I started using a flash. I don't know why all these look too orange to me now. When I first edited them, I felt fine about it, but... Do you check eye focus on every shot or does it even really matter? It like, it really doesn't matter. As long as the photo is like sharp enough, you know, so like I'm stopped down, you know, like I think, yeah, I'm at like F 2.8. So I don't need, and see, that's the thing. 
That's the thing I hate is that a lot of people get online and these photographers sit there and they're like, everything needs to be tech sharp all the way. Like, if it's sharp enough and it looks fine, it's it's okay. Like, I don't need to stop down to F11. You know, like, I don't need to do that. So, you know, like, this is fine. This is okay. It's It works. Yeah, okay, maybe it's not tack sharp, but it's 102 megapixels. Like, it's, it's good. It's fine. Again, there's a time and place to be like, if you're doing studio work where you can control everything and you have time, like, yeah, get the, get the thing tack sharp all the way through. Do it, you know, like. But the fact that people be treating wedding photographers like that, I'm like, what's wrong with y'all? Take the picture. You know, get it get it in focus enough that like when you look at the shot your first reaction is not like oh this is out of focus and then just make it work These shots I used to try and get through pretty quickly. Cause I'm really just trying to make sure that they're like, you know, they're not out of focus. They look fine. Also, when you're doing these shots, they should be like, you shouldn't be missing them. Again, I'm at F2.8. They're standing beside each other. Like it's gonna be in focus. YouTube has people totally uninformed despite tons of content. Yeah, and it, it's more so, I think it's more so the the realism. There's a difference between the studied act of a thing and the realistic thing. It's like when you talk to people who do a trade. There's a there's a very big difference between when you're out there doing the thing versus like the perfect scenario. And you know, a lot of times you're like, "Hey, you know, you ever see someone who's like a construction worker or something or like a builder and they just know they like know wood in and out and how it works?" And so like, sometimes they're like, look, I know they teach you to do X, Y, Z, but sometimes you need to do it like this because generally this thing will happen. And when you do that, you come to find, oh yeah, they know because they've worked with the thing in real life, you know, like it's very different. So while yes, you know, stopping down to F11 to get everything sharp all the way through makes sense sometimes in wedding photography especially like if you're like we were kind of running behind at this point you know like i needed to just get the photos so i'm not gonna sit here and be like okay i need them to be exactly perfect every time i need them to look good i'm gonna perform and they're gonna you know they're gonna look the way they need to look i'm not gonna slack on the photos you know and that's why knowing your camera and its limits and what it can do is very important. Oh, wait, that one had the umbrella. That's why I moved it. That thing, super annoying. Working on spreadsheet here, wishing I was out shooting. <laughs> Anyone give you grief, John, for cutting off their feet? Other photographers, I've never had a couple be like, why is it like that? Um, and again, that's another one of those things. Like I've always felt like the focus is the people. Why do the shots have to be full body every time? I never understood that actually. And every time a photographer gives me crap about it, I'm like, I, but why? I don't know, I'm a photographer and I've never looked at a shot and been like, unless it's cut off very blatantly at the feet, this like half calf, it's fine to me. I'm okay with it, you know? Cause for the most part, like the focus here are the people, you know, I want to see them having a good time. You know, like that's, that's what I want. I want their beautiful smiling faces. 
I don't need the full body. But no, I yeah, I've never had anyone ever be like, why are their feet cut off? Do you find that your YouTube videos appeal to only wedding photographers or a wide audience? I think it is mainly wedding photographers and or photographers thinking about getting into weddings. So the, the audience is fairly wide, but not as wide as it could be. Also too, because I shoot Fujifilm, I think people like to see people talking about their own camera system. So honestly, like I'm at like 200,000 subs now. Like I feel like I could be a lot bigger if I was doing like a more popular camera brand or something like that. So I don't know. That's a sticker with a camera behind it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, I don't know. I don't think all shots have to be full body. I always hate it too, because then when you make your shots full body, you end up getting all these extra things in your photo that now you have to like deal with and get rid of. And it's just super annoying. I feel like it adds too much. I'm in develop mode. I'm like, why is it? It adds too much to the photo taking process that like, so like that, this is what I would say is not a good, like this is when you do have the feet kind of there and you cut them off halfway, that to me is like, yeah, okay. I can see someone being like, you know, what's going on with that. But when it's like cropped up into the calf type of thing, like, I don't know. I, I never understood the whole, you have to do full body. I just, I never, I never understood that rule. It was getting dark at this point. I was using a flash too, but I wanted to keep it still kind of natural. So this is ISO 2000. It's definitely starting to get a little grainy at that point. Full body shots can easily look snapshotty. Yeah, exactly. The consumerism loving algorithm panders to the bros talking about the latest gear anyway. Insight into, yeah. Cause that's the thing, like if you really go through my channel, like if you go through the majority of the stuff on my channel, a lot of it is just teaching on how to run your business and to make money. Like that's what I'm concerned about. Everyone wants to sit around and talk about, you know, like, like, oh, this camera and that camera and this and everything else and how do you do this, that, and the other? And I'm like, don't you, aren't you all trying to get paid? Are you really trying to just waste all your money on your cameras? Like, that's even, so when I second shot, um, the main photographer I was working with, she was shooting on like Nikon D70s or something. Something old, some old, old Nikon camera. I never, I hadn't seen it in so long. And from a business perspective, that makes sense. If the thing works and you've built your business off of it and your photos look great and you know the camera, who cares about new tech? You know, like make your money. This lady just walked all the way through my shot. You see that? Look at her up in there. Luckily there's Photoshop AI. It should be able to get rid of that pretty easily. But I was like, yo man. He says with you. <laughs> hey now, I already had a GFX 100S. So I just sold it to get that just to. See the thing, the thing is to be honest. So for me, what's hard is that because I'm a YouTuber, sometimes I do try and stay on the newest thing 
so then I have something I can make videos about. Because in all honesty, I would have just kept the X-T3s. From a business perspective, they made the most sense. They worked, I had been using them for like five years. They were just fine. They were my workhorses. I knew them like the back of my hand. So there really wasn't a real reason for me to upgrade to the, the X-T5s. But because I'm a YouTuber, and everyone wants to know about like the new cameras and how they work and stuff. It was like, okay, well, let me go ahead and upgrade the cameras, may as well. And then, um, yeah, I can make videos on them and stuff. So that's really, that, honestly, that's the main reason I upgraded. You know, my x 3s were a little old, but they worked and may as well do it. So. That's a lot of my upgrading is just so I can make videos for y'all. I still want a Canon 5D Mark III. <laughs> I mean, yeah, them things were kicking. Everybody was using those. I did my first wedding as a favor on the old Canon M50. And <laughs> my fingers crossed. Oh my goodness, yo. Friend who's an incredible photog. Super excited because she got two new bodies two D800s and her photos are like, yeah, exactly. Like, again, the camera's just a tool. People get too hung up on like stats and, you know, all these things and megapixels and, cause that's the thing, like, look at the new Sony A, uh, what is it? I don't know what it is, A3, some, whatever that crazy with the global shutter. So from a tech perspective, it's really cool. It's like, wow, yo, it is really cool that cameras have come this far and they've really like you know that they've they've made it this far like it's it's really cool but like yeah the a93 thank you <laughs> but on the same end it's like do you need it do you actually need it when i was looking at the specs and stuff really wildlife and sports photographers those are the people who could actually use the features. Everybody else, it's like, okay, you know, 120 frames a second. The only, the only photographers I could see using that would be photographers who um, hybrid shoot. Because then instead of having to take video and photo, if you wanted to make a video clip out of something and then make a short little thing, you could just easily 120 frames a second here and there to make short clips. Thank you so much, Benjamin. Thank you for the super, are those super chats? What are they? I can heart them? Wow. I don't know how this stuff works. It's like new. They're supers, I can heart them. How cool. Here's another one. I'd rather invest in, and yeah, lenses are where, it, that's really where it, but you know, you just gotta, you gotta know your camera. You gotta know how it works. You gotta know its ins and outs. <laughs> Flower Girl's like, I don't wanna do this, but I'm here. You can just, I don't know. For me, I can tell when a photo is black and white. I don't know what it is. But yeah, always having to upgrade to the newest thing is just like, from a business perspective, it doesn't make sense. Again, my business is hybrid now because it involves YouTube. So that's the only place it kind of makes sense for me, but for the most part, you know, just use what you have and keep using it. Soaking my feet, eating cookies, watching the stream. That's yo, I'm trying to get up on that. <laughs> 
I want it to love the 80, but it's just so dang slow. It, I mean, it, it's definitely a little slow. Um, I had shots earlier I was showing off when the bridal party was walking in. And it definitely, it was kind of slow, but again, it's, I feel like it's fine. I didn't feel too bad about it, you know? So one thing I try to do my best at every wedding is get solos of both the bride and groom. Honestly, if I don't get solos, I usually feel like, like I ruined the day. Did I stop down? Is that what happened? So I was at F2 for this shot. And then, uh, no, I was just, okay, I just missed the focus. <laughs> Y'all see the difference? I don't, I don't think I can do it before and after. Yeah, because this is, I noise reduced it. Yeah, that's what shooting for raw is for. Like, these photos were at what, like six o'clock? Yeah, 523. And it had been rainy and cloudy the whole day, so we were like done with light. But because I have the dynamic range and I shot in raw, you could never tell that this was like that late. You know, you would think this was during the day. And that's again, people wonder why people shoot in raw, but there it is. What's that F2 in full frame terms? I don't, I don't know. I'm not good with all those conversions. You think it's possible to start a business with a point and shoot camera? I got a Canon power shot. I, yo, I used to love the power shot, yo. I mean, yeah, you can, you can start a business doing anything, but it really comes down to just understand what it is you're doing and what you're offering and make sure that your style and everything is consistent. But you can use anything. Again, at, at least, especially for wedding photography, you're selling a product. As long as that product is, you know, what people are paying for, and they don't feel like they're not getting the product they paid for, like, yeah, use the point and shoot. So I was using flash. That's what I was getting here, but I opted to switch to natural light. Because I know it's gonna edit better. And see, even so like, this shot was kind of off, right? Cause you know, they were getting their private meal and stuff and I didn't want to bother them. So you know, just come by real quick, snap a shot. Something they can remember. A lot of times I'm gonna black and white it anyway. Because again, at the end of the day, y'all gotta remember the memories are what matter more than perfect photos every single time. So this was when I was explaining, this is my videographer, he helps me out with um, the full wedding day videos. My boy shooting on a red camera. Um, this was me explaining to her how I had the off camera flash set up. So this was when I was triggering the off camera flash, but not my on camera. And then this is when I trigger the off, the on camera flash and also the off camera. And that's my usual setup. I like to keep my setups nice and easy. I don't need them to be crazy and all this stuff. So basically, it's two off camera flashes and I'll usually set them in a direction that I wanna shoot against. So kind of like backlight, so like hair light or rim light or whatever you wanna call it. And then the flash that's on my camera gives the fill on the front for the subject itself. And then what it helps out with too, cause some people they like to use the, um, 
they like to use a trigger and then just trigger off camera flashes and do the whole like half and half. But what I found is what come, what happens is that someone asks you for a photo somewhere else. And then what happens is you don't have your light set up. So you either gotta go grab the light and bring it with you. And that's like a whole ordeal. I'd rather just have the flash on my camera and just basically use like a three lighting setup. So on camera flash, filling him in and then triggering the off camera flash for some like rim light in the back and stuff. That's kind of the, you can see the difference there. This is without the front flash, just the two in the back. And then this is with the front flash. So for my detail shots, I actually like to shoot them super low shutter. Yeah, I'm at one over 50, especially when your camera can do, um, or it has image stabilization built into it. There's no reason not to do low shutter. Now, obviously for this shot of people, it wasn't the best choice, but usually it's fine. When I, when I do like guests sitting around and stuff, I like to make it more of like an action shot. So I don't mind there being like motion blur. I think it kind of looks cool sometimes. But for all this stuff, you know, like it's still life. This stuff ain't moving. The Ibis is gonna keep it still enough. So one over 50 is just fine. I can handle that. For the cake shot, I had my second photographer hold up my loom cube just to give the um, to give the cake some contrast, and you can see it. That's the lighting here, so give it that little side light shadow going on. I have the worst time actually shooting below one four hundred unless the flash is on. I have Ivis on my A7 IV, but I'm still too shaky. Wow. Yeah, I'd be shooting at like one over 40. Like I'll do it for real. <laughs> also, I think a lot of the, I don't know what the Ibis is like on the Sony's, but the Fuji Ibis is pretty good. Yeah, so there's like a quick before and after. I actually might crop it a little bit. Cake's not totally centered. My husband does the same thing on his Sigma FP shooting one over 50. I don't know how you guys. <laughs> hey, Tim shoots car. What's up, man? Gotta be like snipers. Hold your breath. <laughs> No, I like, honestly, like ever since I started using cameras that have like the Fuji Ibis in it, I just, I don't even do anything crazy. I'm just literally just down there hand holding. Bow, 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 one over 60. Not a problem at all. Give me two seconds. I'll be right back.
All right. Hey man, what do you think about the new Sony Global Shutter? Do you think Fuji will release a new camera? I have no idea. <laughs> Honestly too, I was talking about it earlier, like while it is cool, and I'm not gonna front like it's a good, you know, move for, for um, cameras in general, like I don't even see the point for most people but yeah uh, yeah eventually everyone will have it clearly like that's just gonna be where cameras are moving on to so this is where and clearly this is why you would shoot with an xt5 this is where you can see the uh the gfx kind of struggling a bit but also on the same end i was kind of struggling a bit because i i saw them practice in their dance earlier in the day but i didn't actually know how it was going to happen so it was kind of pandemonium, eh? like the groomsmen, they came in more normal, where they all kind of, you know, they did their own thing. So theirs was a little bit easier to keep up with because I knew what was happening. And that that's a lot of too, like, Whenever people talk about cameras and like having super perfect autofocus and stuff, half of it is just you knowing what's about to happen because you have to get the camera there in the first place, right? So when you don't know what's happening, that's the only place where super fast autofocus really starts coming in and you being like, oh yeah, this is helpful. But on a normal shooting and you know what's happening, you shouldn't have to have your camera be that crazy because you should already be anticipating what's about to happen. So you shouldn't be able to relying on the camera so much as like being the only way you're gonna get the shots. Here, let's see. Let's see what my second got because she looked like she was in a better position for um, for those bridal party intros. So this is my second photographer on the X-T4. Yeah. And like, yeah, I'm all up in the shots, but I didn't know how they were coming in. So that works. Let's see, where was I? I just finished this guy. What time is it? Uh, it's like only like three o'clock or something in the afternoon. How often do you switch from continuous to single autofocus during an event? Not often. Um, usually, so processional when they're procession in, I'm continuous. When they're processing out, so I'm like following them out, I'm continuous. Sometimes for the intros like this, I'm continuous, but it depends. Um, and that's about it. I will say I found myself using continuous a little bit more, shooting with the GFX, mainly because with it being um, medium format, I just felt like it was so much more possible for it to miss the focus. So doing um, continuous made more sense. I actually used continuous face autofocus a lot more than I usually do as well. But again, 
the reason I don't like to use continuous face autofocus was shown exactly to me because the camera doesn't know which face to focus on. So what happens a lot of the times is um, it just like, it, there's so many faces at weddings, right? That it just starts, I think that's what happened here. It just starts focusing on like anything it can. Cause it's like faces, faces, need to find the faces. And you're like, bro, like those aren't the faces I want. But it just grabs whoever and, and then you miss the shot. So I, I don't like continuous. Face autofocus is better when you're working with like a single couple or a single model or something. It's much better for that. There goes that shot. It turned out so good. So usually for your first dances and stuff, I'm looking for, I think this one I wanted to crop in on. I'm just looking for interactions, like facial expressions, stuff like that. <laughs> oh goodness, what was I doing? <laughs> you get to look back at the photos. <laughs> and this is why we normally don't send all the photos to our couples. <laughs> too much let's see crop 4,000 by 3,000 eh. let's um let's pull it back a little bit that's a little it's a little tight But yeah, like good facial expressions and stuff, like that's that's what I'm looking for. And even like this shot, I don't know why my flash wasn't triggering, but even this, right? Even though it's off some, like this is a great black and white. Again, it's not always about the photos being perfect. A lot of it's about the feeling. I don't know about Fuji, but Canon can now set buttons on the back to do face focus so you can hold back button focus and it switches to every face. Yeah, I don't I don't think Fuji does that. I think what it does do is you can move the um, joystick to move to different faces, but I don't know, it doesn't work for me. It's not fast enough, it just, I'm not a fan. I just don't like using face autofocus. Yeah, for everyone who doesn't know, Sean Harrison, that's the groom. He's he's in the live chat hanging out. I love the 55 has this weird like ring thing going on with lights. It looks really cool actually. But yeah, that's, that's what you should be looking for in your shots when you're doing first dances and stuff. <laughs> Look for good facial expressions, you know? And so, first dances and stuff, this is one of the places where I start kind of overshooting a little bit. See, that's perfect. And then what I would do to that is we gotta straighten it out. Oh no, it's just the angles. 
Like, even this would be a good black and white, too. But yeah, I overshoot because for the first dance, there's a lot happening, you know? And again, it's mainly gonna be about the expression, so I'm just shooting enough to make sure I get those expressions in. And that's really the only thing I'm looking for when I'm shooting first dances. Like, I wanna see the smiles and the laughs and the tears and the hugs. And then eventually what I'll do is I'll um, try to shoot some shots wide. And it, it really depends on how, um, how long the dance is too. Like some couples will just dance for two seconds and that's it. Other people will do literally the whole song <laughs> so if they're only dancing for two seconds I don't get a chance to be as um, creative as I would like to be versus if they go forever I can get in what I would consider like the safe shots like the nice shots couple facial expressions stuff and then I start shooting wider and getting more creative with it this is an expensive video ending up upgrading to the 100 <laughs> oh no I'm sorry <laughs> I concur, when I got into wedding photography, I used John's presets as a baseline that I branched off. That's awesome. If people aren't moving, I shoot single point. And if they're, yeah, it's like, if they're moving to and from me, then continuous. Um, now, if they're just moving, I'll still use single point and I just like autofocus often. So I'm like, focus, click, focus, click, click, focus, click, click, and I'm just like hitting it. Oh, here's a hot tip for y'all, right? So here's here's the line of the day, right? So everybody intros, so you saw I got that. Then we did bride and groom first dance, mother, son dance, daughter, father dance, right? And then we bless the food. Immediately after any kind of food blessing or just even if, even if there's not a blessing, let's just say they're like, okay, we're about to eat. Before they bring the food to your couple, go up to them real quick and ask them to take a kissing shot at their table because again with photos right photos are about the the memory of what kind of happened it doesn't necessarily always need to be exactly what happened but the memory of what happened so a lot of times at weddings everybody clanks their glass to get the couple to kiss right and then they're looking at you expecting you to take the photo every single time they ding, 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 ding. and then the couple's annoyed because they're like bro we've kissed already and then the photographer's annoyed because they're like i took the shot but what i do is before they even do all that so i ain't got to deal with it right before they get their food walk up to them hey can i get a quick shot of y'all kissing they kiss and then you get out of their hair because at this point it's the reception you know everyone's trying to have a good time all the time before this, they've been dealing with you being all up on them all day. Like, do this, do that, pose like this, walk here, walk there. Da, 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 da. So finally, it's just like, let me get this one kiss shot. Because everyone will remember like, oh yeah, we were clinking the glasses and they were kissing. I already basically technically staged the shot. Also, it gives them a moment to just do what they're doing without me having to like bother them anymore, you know? So right before they eat, can I get a quick shot of y'all kissing? Boom get your shot in that gave me a chance to do this shot um and this was just a quick settings change right so this was the safe shot this was one with the sign in the back a little bit and then i wanted to do a dark one kind of silhouetted and then, yeah and then you see me go now and i'm just taking photos of like people started dancing and stuff so i'm just shooting around seeing how it looks And I think this is all the 55. Oh no, this is the 110 F2. That's why it looks so good. My goodness, yo. Oh, 
A lot of times, too, I like to follow my couple around. And just get shots of them interacting with people. That's why I have the 110 on. Is that I'm just trying to, you know, 85 mil basically stand back and just kind of watch them interact with their friends and stuff. I'm not a fan of table shots. And I like when I have couple see all everyone look at it. I'm struggling over here with the flash. Um I like when my couples don't like expect and want table shots. And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of follow them around and take shots while they're interacting with their friends and stuff. And so they can have some nice candid photos. And what sometimes what will happen is if they notice me, then they'll want to take, you know, some little group shots and I'm already there and prepared for them, you know. But it's much nicer than the whole like, oh, table shots. We got to take shots with every single person at every single table, which is fine. It's just sometimes it becomes like super drastic. Had my sync speed off. It happens, y'all. You know, don't ever don't ever feel bad if you feel like your photos aren't perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. The real thing is knowing your camera so well that like, if you need to quickly adjust your settings, that you can do that. So yeah, my um, speech is, I normally shoot them with an 85. So I think most of this is a 110. Yeah, this is all a 110. So that's like an 85. Have you ever been like disrespected by a couple or like other, another guest during a wedding or photo shoot? Um. I feel like I have, but I don't have any like big stories. A lot of times, um, it's like small stuff. I like, so everyone has their own buttons, right? My button is people telling me what and how to do things. I don't know why that bothers me. Um, so if anything, the people I tend to have the most issues with sometimes on wedding days are like the day of coordinator or like the venue coordinators. Oh my God, venue coordinators are the absolute worst. <sighs> but yeah, normally I, I haven't had anything drastic. Thank God. But yeah, I haven't had any real, real, real bad issues, but it's mainly been with other venues that I've had, or uh, vendors that I've had issues with. How many cars do you fill up? Not that many. So on, one GFX 102, I had 256 gig cards. So I know those are beastie big cards, but that's what I had. So I had, and y'all, I'm over here spending this money, yo. These cards are expensive. So I had the, I got the CF Express 256. This boy is expensive. But one of these is enough for the GFX. So I was shooting in 14-bit um, color, because that's the thing too, everyone's like, oh, the files are probably huge. You can do things to make them not as big. So I'm shooting in lossless compressed 14-bit color. Like there's no point shooting weddings to shoot 16-bit color. That's just insanity. I mean, it's already insanity to be shooting on a 100 megapixel camera for weddings, but yeah, 256 gig card, CF Express and also SD. And that's good for one thing. And I don't even fill it up the whole way either. And then the other camera, I had a 256 SD card and a 128 um, CF Express. So I moved on to the second CF Express for the 128. So I definitely ate up 128. Like all the photos said and done with 
my photos and the second photographer's photo came out to about 500 gigabytes for one wedding. That's the groom's brother. And again, like I've said again, always wait for the hug after your um, after your speeches, right? So you see here, I'm focused on the couple and then immediately I'm staying focused. Usually the easiest thing to do is focus on the person coming to the other person because you'll be able to catch the focus better. So like I would focus on the groom while he comes over to his brother. Or you saw it here earlier too, like the moment you see them start getting up, you wanna follow them so that you can get the hug shot. Cause the hug is always gonna come. Or you can say more, more likely than not, the hug is gonna come. So you should always be prepared for it coming. Cause then if it doesn't, then you're just kinda like, okay, it's fine. But the last thing you wanna do is miss it because you were just like hanging out like, yeah. She tried to come and snatch it. She said, give me that. The throw came so fast. After a bouquet toss, focus on the person who caught it and then try and get a shot of them with the bride. Got a good old garter. Nothing like a good garter. After delivery of the set, how much of that 500 gigabytes do you archive? I usually keep most of it. Um, I don't really archive stuff until after a full year's done. Um, JPEGs, I pretty much keep forever. So whatever I deliver, I try to keep that for as long as I can. I don't see a point in getting rid of it, but for the RAWs, honestly, I probably need to go through and get some of my older RAWs. I still have them, I think. Yeah, two, two years is great, because the thing you don't want is to get rid of your RAWs and keep only the JPEGs you delivered and have the couple come back a year or two later and be like, hey, do you have more pictures of whatever? Like, that's the absolute worst when you don't have a way to be like, oh yeah. Look at that groove face. My dude's in the pocket. <laughs> so yeah, this, this is probably where the JFX struggles the most, which is what I figured is reception when it starts getting dark and people are moving a little bit more it definitely it could keep up and i'm hitting most of my shots and i don't feel like oh no what's happening but it definitely is and the thing to remember too is you're working with medium like you have this huge sensor and you have you know this extreme depth of field so when you miss a shot even a little bit you know it's it's gonna be kind of drastic so I don't even feel bad about how many shots it missed because it's medium format. Like, what do you want? Hey, 
everybody expects too much from their cameras sometimes. You gotta just realize what it is and then deal with it, you know? He done jumped in a shot. I wasn't ready for how close he was, which is why he's out of focus like that. Then we got cake cut. Because of the positioning, I think I had to stop down to like 2.8. How often have you had people come back two, three years later wanting pictures like never? I had it happen once. And thank goodness I had their photos. It was a couple I had shot like, or it was like my second or third wedding. Um, they had moved to California, I guess, and lost their photos. Um, it, so this was like literally five years later. They were like, hey, do you have the photos? And I was like, so normally, you know, this is not included in your package, but, um, yeah, I just happen to have them still. So I was able to get the photos back to them. But yeah, it's it's like rare. You know, I've been shooting for 10 years and I've had someone ask for it once. I was trying some blurry photos, but it ain't really worked the way I want it to. And I think half the problem here is because of the videographer's lights. But yeah, most, most of these shots you're seeing now, this is all X-T5. Again, generally the way that I shoot reception is with the 16 mil. <laughs> it's always hard at weddings too people be all like self-conscious about like oh no you're taking photos of me dancing but I'd be like, look y'all, photos are literally one millisecond of nothing. So like, even if you're the worst dancer, you're gonna look great in the photos, you know? <laughs> as long as you have a great expression on your face. And you're having a fun time you know like you're gonna look like you were you know having a good time that, that's the point like you can't tell if none of these people could really dance or not they look like they can dance I try my best not to cull too much of the reception. Cause you know, you tend to take a lot of photos. So it's real easy to be like, great. All these other photos and here are literally a thousand photos of just the reception. Oh, Javier's in the house. <laughs> What's up, man? Is there anything in an agreement that is normal to say that you keep photos for up to so long? Yeah, I mean, I normally put that in there. 
like your photos stay on your online gallery for about a year and then after like two to three years you know i can delete them because again like first off you have to have it in writing so that if someone comes back they're not like hey no one told me um but second off because like Yeah, I mean, you just you just need it in writing. You don't want someone to show up and just be like, "My photographer doesn't have to have doesn't have my photos." Because you know how people are; they'll find a way to be, make it seem like you did them wrong, and then they'll go to the internet and be like, "My photographer didn't de deliver my photos," and you'll be like, "What, my dude? I delivered them, and you lost them three years later, and tried to come back to me and play me." And now you run into the internet acting like I never did the thing. Like, don't do that. But people, they'll do it. They'll definitely do it to you. My man's grooving in the back, all up in the shot. That's the that's the only downside to these kind of like reception photos, where there's like group shots. But honestly, I'm a big fan of taking these because you can always always remind your couple if for some reason there's shots that they didn't get a chance to take, they can get them at the reception, you know. Because the main thing people really want are just like their memories of, you know, them with their friends and stuff, the people who came to their, their wedding. So the fact that there's someone in the back dancing, like, yeah, okay, it's not the perfect photo, but we got your friends in there. And at worst, we can um, try to do some Photoshop. At this point, we were about to do their private dance and the people were outside already setting up the um, sparkler exit. So I was kind of stressed because I, I wanted to make sure that it was set up correctly, but they were just like going. You need flash and stop down. You can add it to your contract, say we'll store for X amount. Yep. What lights were you using on the subjects? So I have a set of V863s um so i have one on camera and then two in the back you can see them here flashing and generally the one on camera is filling subject and then the two in the back i usually try and shoot against them so it basically becomes um like rim light I always I love a bunch of these like action shots.
couple trying not to die. <laughs> That's what, like, oh God, the sparklers. That was me before I cut my hair. Every time we did sparkler exit, I'd be in there like, oh God. <laughs> what did you miss? I called this whole wedding. It's GFX 102. That's about it though. That's it. Okay, so I called all of my stuff, XT5 and the XT, or the GFX 102. Let's see what we ended up with. 900 photos, that's about right. And then once I add um, my second photographer's stuff to it, it'd be like a good thousand-ish photos or so. I love when everyone is bought in at a reception yeah it's fun what i tweaked about john's preset to work with how i shoot that's what i treat but you got rid of the magenta no I'm just <laughs> did you have loom cube yeah so obviously the videographer's lights helped too they had some actually the videographer's light kind of messed up my normal flow because they had this light on in the back um but yeah i had my loom cube on the front here you'll see my settings. Yeah, I'm at one over 160, 1,000 on the ISO. This is with the 80. And then also, so for this shot, I had a lot more light than normal because the videographers had their lights and my second, she had her light. So there was a lot of light. So it was definitely like ideal. I delivered three couple galleries this past Sunday and it took me maybe three hours tops to load, edit, and export. Nice. Was that a Imagine? Normally I use Imagine. Normally I don't call it like this. But yeah, again, if you're editing, like if you're not using AI, you can easily, you know, select one and then just sync the settings. I don't wanna do transform. And then just boom. <laughs> he looks so weird with the hair. Yeah. <laughs> that was me for like the first week too. I was like, oh my goodness. Orange is popping a little bit. I strongly dislike Imagine. I've tried and tried. Oh no. It works for me. What made you call this way instead of using AI? I'm still half and half on AI culling. AI editing is where it's at. Great, great time saver, absolutely amazing. AI culling is half and half on weddings. Um, I would say culling shorter sessions, like portrait sessions, engagement sessions, AI culling is popping off. But for a full wedding, sometimes it's just, it's not, all the way there and I would rather cull it myself um, so this couple is absolutely awesome this is my first time really using the GFX 102 so I'm gonna cull it personally for them not with AI now the editing I'm definitely gonna run through AI I'm, I'm not about to sit here and edit all this not fully by hand like clearly I'm gonna go back and you know, finish up the photos after AI ran through it one time, but.
I feel like it's because I haven't actually made my own preset from John's yet. Oh yeah, you definitely, with Imagine, you definitely need to make your own and load it into the thing and let it do that. Yep, culling is a bit off, specifically when you save a moment versus quality, exactly. Love Aftershoot for weddings. I used to use Aftershoot. Um, I liked it for culling. But yeah, now it's fully imagined for everything. And, um, you know, depending on depending on what it is, I'll cull it through AI. But for the most part, AI is not all the way there for culling just yet. Because again, like Javier was just saying, there's some things sometimes where like, and I mean, y'all saw it while I was culling. There's things where it's just like off. Or like you missed the focus, but it's a great photo. So you like, you would pick it. Whereas AI would be like, well, it's not a perfect photo. And it's like, well, that, that doesn't matter as much. Yeah, so now really I just have to call my second photographer's photos. And then I can start really editing stuff. And yeah, once I edit everything, I'll probably run it through AI um, denoise. I'll just denoise everything. Call it a day. Okay, I have a legitimate question about your audio on your videos. Yeah. That's the way. Look at the AI denoise, yo. So good. So now I can, you know, five star edited photos. Why are some of these counting as edited? How did you get so comfortable doing that without being scared? Just like speaking in front of a camera? I have so many BTS weddings. Oh. I don't know, I just got used to it. So for the audio, I, I use a Tascam a DR, DL10, something, something of that sort. It just runs off a AAA battery. Stick that thing in my pocket, forget about it. Um, and then after that, yeah, it just kinda, you just have someone behind you shooting. And it's just kinda there. The biggest thing is I don't really concern myself with like making sure that whatever's happening on video is perfect. My biggest concern is, you know, just performing on the wedding day. I just happen to have someone there recording me. Yeah, I think I might I might come through and crop my um my XT5 photos to match. I might do it. I don't know if I want to take the time to really do it for everything, but I don't know. It's kind of nice when everything matches. And yeah, because Fujifilm just has that same feel to it, like, when you're looking at the photos small like this, you're not gonna be like, oh yeah, that's definitely GFX. Like, it just looks like a really good wedding gallery. 
Your work is just so good. Thank you so much. I try my best. <laughs> Do I need to buy your YouTube course? It's a nice little starter. What, what it's mainly gonna help out on is um, what you actually need to do on YouTube, like for your videos itself. If you're looking for help about like gear and how to record yourself and stuff, it won't be the best for that. It's more so for helping you get in the right mindset to actually do YouTube and make your videos more findable and like perform better, which in my opinion, that matters more. Um, you can work on, you know, getting better on video and stuff like that later. But yeah, you really kind of want to make sure you're doing your videos the right way and researching the videos and how to title them and everything. Amanda, thank you so much for that super chat. Beautiful wedding. Thank you for culling and sharing your rawls with us. Always enjoy. No problem. Yeah, again, like I said, in the position I'm in with a lot of eyes watching me and my work, I really do like to just, you know, stay down to earth and let y'all see, like, I'm a real person. I still stress about the stuff. You know, I still take bad photos. But really, when it comes to wedding photography, it's more about how many good photos do you take? You know what I mean? You know, if you're taking 2,000 shots and you can come away, or like, I normally do a wedding, so I'm taking like 4,000 shots and I'm coming away with like 1,000 plus good shots you know if you can give a full gallery of good shots that's what matters the rest of the shots are just throwaways and we know that that's the case thoughts on the a9 three i mean it's cool it's beastie but at the end of the day it's like that's only for certain photographers you know i feel like wildlife and sports are really the photographers who are gonna really get the most out of that Weddings and stuff is a little overkill. How did you Lightroom to display your photos like that? So if you press tab, it gets rid of the sides. And then at the top and bottom, you have these triangles. You can get rid of the top and bottom. And then I'm using the survey view, which is this square with the different squares inside of it. I like to use this view. This is how like if I already delivered my preview, but if I was making a preview, this is how I like to view it. You know, like I'll go through, I'll, I'll pick my five stars for the preview, I'll edit them by hand, and then I'll select them and then view it like this. And this view will always, it just tries to match and to make everything fit in. So depending on the type of photos you have will change how it looks, but it'll just fit the photos in there. So I'm kind of extra sometimes. You see, I only picked all the horizontal shots so that they fit together nicely. So what I could do too is like only choose vertical shots because those also fit together nicely. Um, but I'll do that sometimes just to, you know, see, see what my overall little gallery I just made looks like and look at it and be like, yeah, I did a great job. That's usually how I give myself a confidence boost because at first I'll be like, man, I don't know. I come away from almost every wedding just being kind of like, uh, you know, it was good, but maybe whatever. And then I edit the photos and I see them and I'm like, yeah, I'm actually pretty good. This was my, um, my second photographer right here. And let me, let me actually crop this to match. We'll hit this off with a four by three as well. Here we go. This shot was with the XD20, y'all. Fuji cameras are popping. You can get it if you want, but wouldn't it be fully using the camera's potential? Obviously, I need to get over the feature. I mean, yeah, the camera, it does so much that it's just like, it's cool, but do you even really need that, you know? I shoot a bit of everything. Cameras like the A9 III makes things exciting, and it's a sign of what they did. Yeah, and I think that's that's the biggest point. Like, 
it's not the type of camera that I would go for, and I would say most people don't need to go for it, but just what it's doing for like photography as a whole in the photography community, that's what's exciting, you know? Have you posted this sneak peek? Uh, not on my website, I did post, I usually post them on Facebook. Some of these shots aren't in the sneak peek though. Um, especially cause I just culled, so I added a bunch of different shots now that like weren't, but yeah, see, so I come through here. This is how I just like to look at my stuff so I can see kind of what I have. I'll select a bunch of my photos that I really like. That I, um, you know, that I edited already and everything. And you see I'm picking only the horizontal shots. and then survey mode, and it just kind of fits them in there. It's also a great way to see like how consistent your stuff is. You know, like, does it feel all consistent? Does any of the photos stand out heavily? And you're like, what did I do? And if you're not doing that, then, you know, it's a good little, good little gallery of photos you got. Yeah, so now really I just have to go through and call my um, my seconds photos, which I am not gonna do on the stream for today. Cause I've already, what, how long have I been going? Yeah, three hours. Um, I may go ahead and do another one of the editing your photos um, coming up here. So keep an eye out for that. Cause if I, if I do it, you'll see um, the announcements all over the place and stuff, so. on an R series body. How much do a good monitor help you with editing? It helps a lot. Y'all already know I'm very BenQ heavy. Um, the monitor I'm editing on now is BenQ. I got two other BenQ monitors in this office right now. Um, it, it really makes a difference. But supposedly other cameras are pretty good. Or not cameras, uh, monitors. I'm just not familiar with any other monitors. I've pretty much used BenQ the whole time in my business. Like I've never used anything else, so I'm kind of biased. Regarding Facebook, is that the only platform you use to show your work besides your website? I mean, yeah, I do Instagram, my website, Facebook. I don't use Facebook like that though. I literally just use it for posting um, previews. And that that's pretty much it. I'm working on my SEO right now on my site. I think that's really the biggest thing. Yes, having a monitor is way better than looking at the actual laptop screen. Yeah, the colors are, BenQs, they come out the box like calibrated and looking good and they're just, they're great monitors. I've been a fan for a long time. John, what is your Facebook page? I think it's, uh, what is it? It's Facebook, JBIV Photos. For some reason I couldn't get JBIV Photography. I can't remember why. Cause I made everything else just JBIV photography. And then it's like this one thing. LS said under best Fujifilm photogs. <laughs> but yeah, this looks good y'all. I'm a black and white this one. He was a little too close for the focus. So it's like on, but not really. And it's, it's mainly because again, it's the GFX, right? Like, it's a cool shot. And so basically at this point, right? Like if this were a preview, I would select it like this, look at it and be like, cool, it looks fine. Nothing stands out as crazy to me. So then I would go ahead and export it. So I would hit the export button. And I'm just gonna, I'll just put it under a new folder. 
I'm gonna do full resolution, JPEG 100% quality. And then I open it up in exposure. Cause remember, I don't sharpen inside a Lightroom. Thank you so much for the look. Yeah, Sean, these photos are great. So yeah, expect around like a thousand-ish photos. Um, also, since I recorded the behind the scenes and Christmas is coming up, I'm gonna try and get y'all these photos pretty, pretty soon. And again, I'm not gonna rush them. I just, you're, you're the last wedding of the year. I don't have any other couples. Like I finished all my other work. So y'all are the only thing I have to do. Um, so I'll be getting it out to you at, in a timely manner. So if you, if you get the photos back real soon, don't think it's because I like rushed them. It's more so because I'm super excited because I got to use the GFX and y'all look amazing. <laughs> Your wedding day was really awesome. Um, and yeah, my second, she did great too. That was my first time working with her, um, but she's down in the Atlanta area. She did great and she did Fuji too. So everything is all Fuji across the board, which is awesome. So yeah, once I export this, it opens up an exposure because that's where I actually do all my sharpening and adding grain to my photos. And that's another thing that's funny. So when I fully finish this gallery, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the whole thing through the AID noise, but then I'm just adding grain back to it after the fact, which is kind of funny, but I like the way the grain looks and having your photos clean in the first place really helps with that. Now my challenge to myself is better composition. Yeah, and that's always the biggest, that's the biggest challenge. Sorry I keep hyping you up in these lives, but seriously, the work's in it. Thank you so much. I still, I think I still need to work on my own composition too. Again, I'm, I'm very quick to always center focus. But again, for me, a big thing is with weddings, that's why everyone always, oh, rule of thirds, rule of thirds. But your focus on a wedding day is the people not so much the location. So when the people are the focus to me, center focusing makes sense because everything leads to them. Like even this, right? You got your leading lines focusing on them. You know, the focus here is on him. You can tell he's basically center focus. Um, so aside from just being creative about certain, you know, like situations and things and shooting wider, I think that's what helps um, a lot of photographers for wedding photography, they miss out on some of the composition they could be having because they shoot so tight all the time. Like they're too concerned about having blurry backgrounds. So you start missing out like how you can compose things to look a little differently. Because I'm afraid to do the compositions like your one photo there with the bridal party and then, yeah. But see, and that's the thing that's crazy. So this shot, I like, I've always liked doing these, but remember if you listen to my one star story, that's the kind of stuff that she said she didn't like, which was crazy because I take photos like this all the time. But the biggest thing for me too, is make sure you're getting shots like multiple shots. So yeah, this is my more creative shot. I love these like waist up, lots of sky bridal party shots. I always love those. But if you saw when I was calling, I did have a normal straight on full body, but that that's my thing. Even even listening to you talk about it, you're like, oh, I wish I could, you know, wasn't so scared of like more creative compositions. A lot of that comes from the question I had earlier about like, are you ever worried about cutting people's feet off? That's why people don't really have fun, creative composition because they're thinking about stupidness like, oh no, can't cut the feet off. So every shot has to be full body. So you're already like cutting off any kind of creativity you could have because you have to, don't cut the feet off. I don't know, I'm, I'm not a fan. I think make a good photo, make it work. Like, have y'all ever, have y'all seen, uh, y'all know Sam Hurd? You wanna talk about some, some um, creative composition and just like craziness? Sam Hurd is beastie. His composition is ridiculous, yo. I'm more afraid of blur on my subjects myself, yeah. I've been told that cutting off any body part is a no-no. That's what I'm saying, so like, oh, can't cut off any body part. Well then how would you ever like make any photos without always 
sitting around being like, oh no, oh no, gotta compose, like, you can't even take a photo. The whole time you're just sitting there being like, <sighs> and it's like, just take the shot. If you cut down it for real, not just a little bit. And that, that's the thing, like, again, I was talking about that earlier. It's like, if the feet are in the shot and you're cutting off like the front of the shoe, okay, you know, like, just to full body. But if it's like half up, thigh up, I, I feel like that's fine. I don't see what the problem is. So these are my presets I usually use for my sharpening and grain. So my black and whites are really grainy. They add a little bit more contrast. So that was the before. So this is how I edited it in Lightroom. And then this is when I added the final sharpening and grain. And then I have the sharpening and grain here for my, uh, my color photos, which is not as grainy. And so now you can see any photo this X-T5 is gonna be smaller. That's just the resolution difference there. And then any photos GFX is gonna be larger because we have way more resolution. And also, if I cropped in on the photo, it will be smaller as well. And so then I go through, normally I don't do it one by one like this. I'll do the grid mode and just select them all. Put the normal sharpening grain on all the photos and then just find the black and whites. Yeah, look at that difference. That extra contrast that I add. It's like perfect for the black and whites. So fun. You know, like, I love this. It's so good. Yeah, and then that's normally what I do. And then after I put my sharpening and grain preset on, then I save it from Exposure X7, and that's my whole export workflow. Pretty straightforward. Also, composing for digital versus composing for print is important to know. That's true as well. What about removing things like electric sockets and light switches? I do that sometimes. It depends on how annoying it is. Um, but a lot of times I won't do it. Like, it's just if it stands out. Like, you saw me earlier with this shot, right? Like, something was up here on the wall, and I just could see it from a distance, I felt like. But yeah, it, it really depends on how annoying it is. Normally I don't do it. Unless it's like, I have like the bride getting ready and I have a very clean, nice background and then there's one electric socket right there in the middle. Yeah, then I'll get rid of it, but. Awesome. For now though, I'm about to head off and do some other things with my life. Um, I, got, I got life to live and things to do. Thank you for hanging out with me while I was finishing up something I needed to do, which was call that wedding. I'm pretty much halfway cold with it. Um, just so y'all know about the process, a lot of times I don't use my second photographer's photos. I use like the tiniest bit of them. So I'm gonna go through now, see how their photos look, see if she got any alternate like angles that work out for me. And that's pretty much it. I'll be ready to run it through Imagine. I'll send it all the photos I've edited already because that gives Imagine an idea of what I'm working with. Run it through Imagine, double check it, get it prepped and ready to go. Um, the one main and last thing that I normally do is down here, how I create this bucket of the different sections of the day. 
I'll be doing that as well. And I like to do that because when I export, I can export everything in sections of the day. And then in pick time, it shows up like that. But also, that helps me if I need to go through and double check stuff. I'm not going through the whole gallery. I can be like, let me just look at the cake cut. Let me just look at the ceremony. Let me just look at getting ready bride or the, the um, reception or something. I can just do those in parts. It kind of breaks it up. So yeah, editing our weddings <laughs> next live. I think I might. Um, if I am doing it, it's going to be next Friday. So keep an eye out for that announcement. <laughs> and don't submit your whole wedding. <laughs> Javier's like, hey, are you about to, are you gonna edit my next wedding for me? <laughs> Thank you for handing out, hanging out with us and dancing with us too. Yeah, man, it's fun. Expect those photos in the next coming weeks. Thanks again for hanging out, y'all. Don't forget to give some shout outs and congrats to Sean, he's the groom, he's in the chat right now. And again, subscribe for the full wedding day GFX video that will be coming out hopefully not too long from now. And I will catch you all next time.